I kill with my heart. The Dark Tower is a classic tale of good versus evil that combines elements of the sci-fi, western, and fantasy genres into one epic journey. But to Stephen King fans, it's more than that. The Dark Tower is the long-awaited adaptation of King's beloved novel series, in which a heroic gunslinger goes to battle with his arch nemesis over the fate of the universe. It's also the only place where you can see Stringer Bell face off with Rust Cole. Well, get on with it, motherfucker. Now this is the true Detective Season 3 that we deserve. At the heart of this battle is the tower itself. The epicenter of creation, this powerful structure supports infinite worlds and connects them all. It's also one big crazy metaphor. See, all of Stephen King's stories take place in the same universe, and the Dark Tower ties them all together. If you've seen the trailers, you may have already noticed a few of those connections, like this Pennywise Easter egg from It. Clocking in at over a thousand pages, it is a cautionary tale about our unhealthy attachments to material possessions and our inability to just let things go. Like, maybe it's better to lose your paper boat than to follow a scary clown into a storm drain. But if you do take the plunge, you can find your way out by losing your virginity in the sewers. Spoiler, that actually happens in the book. Like, for real, I'm not joking. It takes place in Derry, a fictional town referenced in many of King's stories, including Secret Window, Dreamcatcher, and 112263. It centers on a group of misfit kids who join forces to fight a malevolent entity from a dark dimension. No, not that one. This one. An evil creature that disguises itself as a sinister clown named Pennywise. It's not a great disguise. Mike, Bill, Eddie, Ben, Stanley, and Beverly, collectively known as the Losers Club, set out to destroy Pennywise after he kills Bill's little brother Georgie, who was buried in the Mount Hope Cemetery. That's the cemetery where Gage was buried in Pet Cemetery before his dad dug him up and buried him in that other cemetery. You know, the one that resurrects cats and gives us the most adorable zombie ever. <laughs> Back to the Losers Club. Mrs. Kasprak, Eddie's overbearing mother, grew up next door to Paul Sheldon, the novelist from Misery. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Pennywise isn't the only villain in it. The kids also deal with local sociopath Henry Bowers. Henry grows up to be a convicted killer, but the system really should have red flagged him when he was a kid. <laughs> I'll kill you all. I'll kill you all! You're dead, bad boy. He literally just told another boy he's going to murder him, and the teacher does nothing. Dolores Umbridge did a better job watching out for her students. I'll kill you all! Like all movie bullies, Henry terrorizes children alongside his best friends. Thank you for being a friend. One member of Henry's gang is Eddie Corcoran, whose father was sent to Shawshank Prison for killing Eddie's older brother. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Hold on. Get busy living. Or get busy dying. Sorry, I just, I really like this movie. Before Andy Dufresne was wrongly convicted and locked up in Shawshank, he created a stock portfolio for a man named Dusender. That would be the dancing Nazi for Matt Pupil. Back to it. Mike Hanlon's dad was in the army with the mess cook named Dick Halloran. After they survived a horrible fire in Derry, Dick went on to work at the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. That hotel can also be spotted in the Dark Tower trailer. Dick shares a special psychic connection with Danny, the heavily sedated boy in The Shining. It's like I go to sleep and he shows me things. That ability, which some call the shine, is also possessed by Mother Abigail in The Stand. The big bad guy in The Stand is Randall Flagg. He appears in The Dark Tower as the Man in Black. A few of his other aliases include Roger Finney, Walter O'Dim, Raymond Fiegler, a football coach, a Wall Street tycoon, and a sexual predator. Joining Roland on his quest to stop the Man in Black is Jake Chambers, a kid from New York who also has a bit of the shine. In the world of the gunslinger, it's called The Touch. <laughs> Another character in King's universe who has similar abilities is Carrie White from Carrie. Carrie White lived in Chamberlain, Maine, or as it's sometimes known, the pig's blood capital of New England. Chamberlain is also home to a gas station owned by Teddy Duchamp, the uncle of another Teddy Duchamp, played by Corey Feldman in Stand By Me. Stand By Me takes place in Castle Rock, the same setting as Cujo, Needful Things, The Dark Half, and The Dead Zone. Johnny Smith from The Dead Zone also has a touch. You may remember him as the guy who tried to assassinate Judd Bartlett, who used a baby for a human shield. Johnny was killed and buried in a cemetery next to the Marstons. That's the name of the family who previously inhabited the spooky old house where the vampires live in Salem's Lot, which introduced us to Father Callahan. I'm a priest. Who battles vampires and later appears as a significant character in The Dark Tower Part 5, Wolves of the Kala. That's the one where Stephen King retells the Seven Samurai and wolves use exploding snitches from Harry Potter to fight Roland and his quartet, which consists of a juvenile delinquent, a junkie, a gun-toting woman with multiple identities, and a talking raccoon dog. These books get wild, you guys. Anyways, a reporter who interviews Johnny Smith in the Dead Zone also appears in the Tommyknockers. In that book, residents of a small town are influenced by an alien object, which attracts the attention of a mysterious government agency known as the Shop. The Shop is also mentioned in the Langoliers, and it's behind the Lot 6 experiments. You know, the ones that weaponized a teeny tiny Drew Barrymore in Firestarter? They also control the Arrowhead Project, which unleashed the giant monsters in the mist, and the monsters lurking inside of us all. 
Man, that ending is bleak. But where did those monsters in the mist actually come from? <laughs> there is an explanation that may also explain how Pennywise appeared in our world. The Dark Tower introduces the concept of thinnies. These are spots where the barrier between worlds has been worn thin and allows for all kinds of things to slip through. One of these worlds is Todash Darkness, a space inhabited by unspeakable evil and horrible creatures, like the monsters in the mist. Todash Darkness and all other worlds, including ours, could end if the titular Dark Tower is destroyed by the Man in Black and his supernatural thugs known as Low Men. These are the same Low Men who pursued Ted Brodigan in Hearts in Atlantis, which is kind of a mystical retelling of the sitcom Mr. Belvedere. Drinks on the China, never met it before, who cares? Ted also has a bit of the shine, which makes him a key player in the Dark Tower story. He's not the only character in Hearts in Atlantis with a connection to the tower. Bobby, the little neighbor boy who befriends Ted, bears a strong resemblance to Jake Chambers from the Dark Tower. Bobby is Jake's twinner. It's a sort of doppelganger from an alternate reality. Even Stephen King has a doppelganger. An alternate reality version of the author appears in the Dark Tower. In fact, the seventh book reveals that the Dark Tower villain known as the Crimson King caused the 1999 van accident that nearly killed Stephen King in real life and motivated him to finally finish writing his magnum opus. Look, I know it's a lot to process, but if you think that's too much, just wait until you see the Dark Tower. These connections are just the beginning. For Screen Crush, I'm Britt Hayes.